Good morning. This is number lecture number 15 of my series of lectures about facial growth and malocclusion. Um, I wanted to talk about breastfeeding and its influence on child development. Now, we know that what our ancestors, and I'm talking now of 20,000 years ago, used to naturally breastfeed children for three, four, and occasionally five years. Um, and this was, one might say, routine at the time. And of course, like with animals, um, the child or the new infant has no ability to chew food of any other sort, and so they rely totally on breast milk. Now, um, when we consider the impact on this, on the, the growth of the face, um, we have also to consider um, other factors which can influence that. Um, essentially, these are considered to be the food we eat, which these days is very soft, whereas in our ancestors' time, of course, was very hard. In fact, when children were growing up, the mother would often chew the food for the child and then give the child the food when it had been chewed. And of course, you know, that is very common in many animal species where they actually um, swallow the food and then regurgitate it for the young infant, usually in birds, this is. But um, no doubt, soft food that we eat these days must have an impact on the development of the jaws. And we know that if you feed animals on very soft food, their jaws are smaller. But the difference is actually quite small in itself. Um, you don't get much difference in the size of an animal's jaw, depending on if you feed it hard food or soft food. Nothing like the difference you get in humans between those who have well-developed jaws and malocclusions. So I think we have to accept there are other factors which are more important. Now, um, the habitat has always been a point that I've considered very important. Our ancestors grew in the wild. They usually lived in caves or out in the open. Um, and um, they had very few allergies. Now, modern children are almost all brought up in, well, in houses, contained spaces anyway. And in every room, there are hundreds, if not millions, of allergens. They are the tiny particles which create allergies. And allergies are a major factor in modern human development. You would know that many children um, at around six or months or maybe a year will develop snotty noses and start breathing through their mouth. This, I believe, is a crucial point in their development because subsequently many of them will become what we call habitual mouth breathers. And this, we do know from research, can seriously damage the development of both jaws. But today I wanted to talk more specifically about breastfeeding. Now, I think that is probably the biggest change from the days of our ancestors to modern children. Breastfeeding these days often lasts a few days, if at all, and on average lasts no more than six months. Now, we might ask, how might this have an effect on the growth of a young child? Surely you can feed them just as easily with the spoon. Now, that is the point where I disagree. I think much of the problems of today are caused by spoon feeding. We know 
that for a good or well-developed face, you need your tongue firmly on your palate. There's lots of research to show that. But of course, if you are spoon-feed, or fed, I should say, um, you will often develop the habit of sucking on the spoon. Now, every mother would know when she first starts feeding her children with a spoon, the child won't take the spoon, they sorry, the food off the spoon, they'll try and suck it like they have been sucking the breast. And the mother then has to scoop the food from all around their lips and put it back in their mouth. You often see mothers doing this when they're spoon feeding. Now, um, I think at that point, they are teaching their children to suck their food. And there is a later penalty to pay for that. Now, you might say, well, surely, what is the difference between sucking on the breast and sucking on a spoon? And I can see that when a child and even animals breastfeed, they will usually pump the breast. And this is why I don't think the bottles, which most mothers introduce their children to, um, are very good. Because with a bottle, a child will suck. With a breast, a child will pump. This, I think, should result in the tongue being placed firmly against the palate when a child is feeding. And if they do this for three, four, or possibly five years, they will get into the habit of pushing their tongue firmly on their palate. Now this, we know, has two other effects. It causes the palate to widen so that they have a big wide palate and we know that all our ancestors used to have big wide palates. But there's another factor too. The pumping action also encourages the forward growth of the upper jaw, the maxilla. And this is crucial for good facial looks. Everybody knows that good cheekbones will give you really good looking, attractive appearance. And young children have this because they push on their maxilla and push it forward. But of course, if you learn to suck when you eat, um, this will tend to collapse your jaw so it will be narrow and too far back. You might be horrified to know that only about 5% of modern humans actually swallow their food by sucking on the palate. Nearly all of them suck on their teeth when they swallow. Now, I have no doubt that that is because they were bottle-fed and never breast-fed for long enough. I think you should think very seriously about this. Essentially, I believe that the position of the tongue determines the alignment of the teeth. But the position of the jaw, open or hanging open or shut, um, makes the difference between the growth of the jaws. And that really is what I said in 1981 when I suggested the tropic premise. And I really haven't changed my mind since.